Okay, so welcome back. We're going to be starting our fifth example, I believe, on calculating the area between functions using definite integrals. Um, if you have any question, feel free email me at absolutemathematics.yahoo.ca if you have any questions about uh, problems your prof gave you and you can't figure them out. And if they're a really good question, maybe I'll even make a YouTube video out of them. Alright, so let's start with our final example. Uh, definitely our most challenging example, so just to warn you, this will be a long video. I'm not anticipating it will be. Anyway, so just like all the other questions, it asks find the area bounded by the curves. Typical question. Um, except we have four functions this time. And as you can see, each one of these functions represents a line. And to save time, I have actually already graphed them out. So you can see we have four functions. Each of them are a line, so we have four lines. One, two, three, four. And when you put them all together, they actually bound an area that makes a parallelogram. Or at least should be. I know my drawing's a bit sloppy. Okay, so to do this, what makes it difficult compared to the others, or at least different, is that when we take our rectangle, and in this case we can actually take vertical or horizontal rectangles because if you try it you'll actually see that uh, a different function will be touching the top or bottom at every point but just preference I'm going to take vertical rectangles okay and when we do this you'll actually see that at the beginning here when we take our our vertical rectangle it touches the function y equals 2x plus 6 at the top and it touches y, I mean x plus y equals 1 at the bottom. But if you continue, once it reaches this point here, and you draw, uh, it's kind of tight, but just try to, try to use your imagination with me. From here all the way to this point, there's actually a small area where if we draw a rectangle in there, the bottom of our rectangle is still going to be touching x plus y equals 1, but the top will now touch this other function here, which is x plus y equals 5. So we have to do something to compensate for that. And then after, once it gets past this line, it's going to start touching these two functions, right? See if we draw a rectangle here, the top touches x plus y equals 5, but now the bottom touches our other function 2x plus 1. So we actually, to solve this, we actually have to add a bunch of different integrals to add the area, right? And this should make sense because if we wanted to calculate the area of just this, we would write uh, our formula of the upper function minus the lower function from here to here. And that would give us the area of this. Well, if we wanted this and this, we would just write another integral of this upper function minus this lower function from here to there. And that would give us the full area, right? So that's exactly what we're going to do. Except we have three different areas. And let me mark them out. So again, I'm just going to write out our formula, just so it sticks with you forever and ever. <laughs> so f of x minus g of x dx and it's going to be x, right, because we're using vertical rectangles, so if we continue, it's going to it intersect the x-axis, which is most common, usually. Okay, so our first one is going to be, and I don't have much room, and I kind of want to keep our graph here, but I'll try to squeeze it in here, okay? Sorry if it gets tight and messy. Okay, so we're going to have the integral, and we're going to do this first section here. So it's from here to here, okay, all the way till it reaches this intersection point, and then it's going to change after that. So basically we have to find out what this point is, x, by, com by finding the intersection of this function and this function. So to do that, we've done this in other videos, you should know how by now. We have x plus y equals 1, and then we have the graph y equals 2x plus 6. Okay, so we're going to re replace either x or y, and I'm going to choose to replace, well, we have to replace y because we want to find x, right? So let's get rid of the y's. 
So if we change this, we get y is equal to minus x plus 1. So now we're going to put this into this function, replacing y. So we get minus x plus 1 is equal to 2x plus 6. And now if we just solve for x, we're going to get plus 2 on this side, so we get x. And then we get minus 1. We should get x is equal to 5. Which doesn't seem to make sense. What am I doing wrong? x plus 2x minus x plus 2x. Oh no, it's minus 3x. My, sorry. So x is actually equal to minus 5 thirds. There, that makes more sense. So this is our intersection point here. So I'll try to write it really small. It's minus 5 thirds. Okay, so we found our first point. Next, we want to find our second point, which ends at this intersection right here. And that's the intersection of this function. Oh, sorry, you can't see. Of this function and this function, this intersection right here. So now we do the same thing, but we're combining two other functions now. So our first function, we have, let's see, I'll try to write it here. We're already running out of room, but bear with me. So we get y is equal to 2x plus 6. And then we have x plus y is equal to 5. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to isolate y is equal to minus x plus 5. And we plug this into our first equation. And we're going to get minus x plus 5 is equal to 2x plus 6. And then when we do this, we get minus 3x and then we get is equal to 1, so x is equal to minus 1 third. And that makes sense. Okay, so now we can write our first integral. We have all the information. So we know that a here is minus 5 thirds, minus 5 thirds, and b is minus 1 third, and then it's the upper function minus the lower function. Well, if this is our rectangle, we see our upper function touches the top is y is equal to 2x 2x plus 6 minus um, our lower function which is x plus y is equal to 1. Now we can't have the y in there, right? So we have to write it as a function of y. So x plus y is equal to 1 is the same thing as y is equal to 1 minus x, right? So we write 1 minus x. And that's the first part. So we calculate the area from there to there. Now we need the area of the next little section, which is actually this tiny, tiny, tiny little section between here before it switches off to the next function. So I know it's a bit hard to see, but we need that little area between. And then after, we're going to add this area. So let's start that. All you have to do is you put a plus sign. And I don't have enough room, so I'm going to continue here at the bottom. You do a new integral, and we already know that it starts at minus one third, so that's great. We can put minus one third there, but we have to find out the intersection here. So we're going to do the same thing again here, and we have the graphs of the functions x plus y is equal to 1, and this one is 2x plus 1 is equal to y. So now we do the same thing. We get y is equal to minus x plus 1. We replace in here 2x plus 1 is equal to minus x plus 1. Oh man, you can't see. Sorry about that. And then we're going to get... Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> Sorry, obviously it, you're right on the, um, the y-axis, so that obviously equals 1. We do even have to calculate it. All right. So we have 1, and then we have the upper function, and I know it's hard to see, but pretend there's a, there's a rectangle here, and you can see the upper function is actually this line right here. Okay, so we have x, uh, actually it can't be like this, we have to put in the other form, right? So it's y is equal to 5 minus x, so that's what we have. So we have 5 minus x minus the lower function, 
which is still the same function as before, so it's 1 minus x. And then we have to calculate the last bit of our area, and I'm going to try to do this quickly so I can fit it in one video, but we're going to have 1 minus x, and then we're going to do one more plus because we have to calculate a new area because the rectangle does not touch the same two functions, so that's why we're switching, right? And then the the upper bound here becomes the lower bound, just like last time, and then we have to find this intersection. So let's do that, and it's our final one. So we're going to have, and I know you can't see, but just let me write it down first. We're going to have, it's, it's the intersection of this function and the intersection of x plus y is equal to 5. Well, y is equal to 5 minus x, so we combine the two and we're going to get 5 minus x is equal to 2x plus 1 and there's no room here but if we drag it over here we're going to get minus 3x is equal to minus 4 x is equal to minus 4 over minus 3 which is just 4 over 3 alright so that's our final intersection point so we can write 4 over 3 and then we're going to have the upper function, so now we're looking at this rectangle, right? So the upper function is x plus y is equal to 5, but remember it has to be uh, in a function of y. So we have 5 minus x minus, now the lower one, which you can see touches the bottom here, is equal to 2x plus 1, so minus 2x plus 1. And actually, I forgot them for each one, but remember the dx is in here. You'll lose marks for that, for sure, on an exam. So don't forget that. And that's it. This whole thing calculates the area of this, of this, uh, the area within this parallelogram. So it's quite long, yeah, and that, you just set it up, now you have to solve for it. And if I check, because I did this, um, you should get an answer. If you really want to solve this, your final answer should be 20 on 3. So I encourage you to try it just to do a good program uh, problem where you exercise doing all your integrals and stuff. And you should get this final answer, 20 over 3.